Hi, welcome to another episode by myself, Rob Allen. This is the long-awaited barrel braking test. Uh, whether they break or not, we don't know. It will probably bend on the aluminium, but it will probably snap on the carbon. What I want to show here is the difference in rigidity between both aluminium and carbon. And we might even try a standard general purpose aluminium opposed to the aircraft grade we do use with the, uh, our rail barrels. So, let's get going. In this jig, we have an aluminium barrel. It's just over a meter. The points we're going to be pulling against is two rollers that are 800 millimeters apart. And we're going to pull in this direction, which will give us the amount of flex we see relative to the amount of kgs. And uh, we're going to pull it and see what happens. At the moment, we're on zero and about 25 centimeters. That will get less because of the direction of the ruler, but let's see how it goes. 1 centimeter. Yeah, 2 centimeters, we got 64 kgs. I'm going to take it off and see if we've had any clicks. I would say we have a bent barrel there. No, not yet. Let's take it further. We're pulling directly on the rail, which is the direction the rubbers would be pulling. Rubbers would try and bend the barrel in that point. That's three centimeters, 125 kilos. Definitely a slight bow. Not so easy to see. Probably no more than a millimeter, but there has been some flex. That was actually surprisingly strong. We're now going to do an aluminium tube, which is a standard general purpose type of aluminium, not aircraft grade, and it doesn't have a rail, but it's same diameter, same wall thickness. What we're going to demonstrate here is the difference between just general purpose aluminium opposed to aircraft grade. Aircraft grade is actually very similar to general purpose, but it has been treated and uh, hardened by work hardening it through special dyes and tensioning it and heat treatments. I'm not exactly sure on the science behind it, but it does make a significant difference to the brake strain or tensile strength and or flexibility. Let's see how it does. One centimeter. Two centimeters there, fairly close. Let's see if there's any bends. Yeah, clearly there's a bend in that. There are two centimeters, 70 odd kilos. It's bent more than that of the other with a much higher load. It doesn't have a rail, but it's the same wall thickness, same diameter, and uh, fine for small guns, perfectly fine for light guns, but I wouldn't overpower a barrel like this. The flex, what would, uh, it will create a small flex, but the moment you fire that gun, the barrel will try and straighten, and the probabilities are the muzzle will chop down on the spear, creating a wobble. That wobble will cause your spear to slow down and affect your accuracy. Okay, let's move on to the carbon option. We've got the carbon barrel now set up. This is just raw carbon, non-coated, no plugs, nothing, just a plain one meter section, same as what the aluminium was. Carbon is a lot more brittle, so the chances are it won't flex near as much before shattering. Let's see what it does. There's a hundred. And 
160, 170, 200. Now we can hear it going at 220. That was 300. Didn't want to break it. These things can shatter quite violently. Yeah, that's still perfectly straight. Absolutely perfect. Now was at 300 kg. Obviously, that's a massive overkill. We don't need near that much strength. But just just to show you how much stronger that is, and way lighter. Well, there you go. Now you know the difference between carbon and aluminium. This is just to demonstrate that was the carbon we forced. It's come back straight, and that's a straight edge against the aluminium non-rail. That just gives you an idea how much it bent with only two centimeters of flex in it. But wait, there's more. We're going to now see how far we can pull this Timberline gun, one of our new guns in our range. Let's see what that can take. Flexing. We over 300. This thing breaks, it's going to go everywhere. Yeah, that's about as much as a single go. Yeah, it starts creaking. Too scared to break, it's going to hurt. Well, there you have it. Even better than plain carbon, for obvious reasons, it has the strength of the timber added onto it. There was a creek at the end there at about 450 kilos. Um, if I pulled it much further than that, uh, this thing could get airborne. I'm just marrying the rails up perfectly. And no light shining through there. Perfectly straight still. For obvious reasons, the carbon doesn't take a set and neither does the timber. The timber would be able to flex a lot more. It's a timber, it's a tree. It's perfectly straight. I'm impressed. I heard a creak there, but I don't see any delamination. And that was at 450 kilos. The guys can modify this and uh, I'll take it and I'll use it. Bit of a dent there from the roller on the frame. I'll use that. It's all perfectly usable. Well, there you have it. This is to compare aluminium to carbon, and I hope you enjoyed that episode. Wait for the next. <laughs>